It's my turn. <laughs> the supercharger. Just, just the name itself turns like grown men into giggling children again. It's like supercharger. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, so it, it is. It's my turn. Um, I've been doing other people's superchargers. We've done quite a few here at 4x4 DNA now, and it's time to put it on this car. Um, and I'm gonna try and squeeze every little kilowasp out of it. I've learned a few things along the way that, um, you know, in snorkel is gonna help. That's gonna give me like, another eight kilowatts. Um, having uh, headers, uh, we've got pacemaker extractors on there, so we're gonna squeeze a few more kilowatts out of that. Uh, I'm even gonna go and find some different dyno tires. Um, so we've been dynoing them on like 33s, like stocky size, but they were on all terrain. So I'm gonna try and find some like uh, worn out tires basically, the, the, those crappy Continentals that these cars come with, uh, and pump them up to like 45 PSI. Uh, what else are we doing? Uh, we're gonna service the car so it's gonna have fresh oils. Uh, I'm gonna put new air filters in it. We're really trying to do everything we can because there's a number that I'm aiming for. No one, uh, no supercharged car that we've put through this workshop yet has hit the magical number of 300 kilowatts at the rear wheels. Um, this is going on the Dynot Powertech. So that's what we're going for. So it's just the, the standard 2300 kit, not standard fuel pump, standard, I think, 6 psi um, pulley. But we want to hit, I want to do everything I can to hit that 300. I might even drop the car, because it's being dynoed Friday. I might drop the car there Thursday night, so it's like all fresh and it's like the first dyno of the day. And see if we can get this up to 300. Because I just want to hit that number. It's silly, it's an arbitrary number, but like that's what we're targeting. So the blower is going on. And this is a vlog, so I won't just talk about my car. There's other stuff happening around the place. You'll see over here, just on the background over there, there's some coils. Like you've seen the coils that have been, um, well, I've been trialing in this car. They're the, the one inch lifted tow coils. So what we're gonna do now is create a um, standard height tow coil. And that's it right there. Just for comparison, say I put the, the King's standard height next to it. Um, the difference between them, there's less wraps in this one um, going around it. Less wraps, like when we put it through the cap cutter, means when you go to heavier loads, it will um, behave better, basically. Um, the more wraps you've got is for comfort, except um, the coil degrades in performance the more weight that you put on it. This one should be an improvement in theory. So we're gonna test this in a car tomorrow and looks like we're getting into the <laughs> coil business. Uh, and for sheer like interest, so when you, I don't know what car that one was, um, when you get into a critical component like brakes, steering or suspension, um, your public liability goes, oh, thank you Carl. Uh, it's that time of the day. <laughs> like your normal pub public liability for a, you know, a workshop or something might be like 10 grand. But when you do a critical component that's um, you know, like you're putting your own name on, then triple that. So we've gone and got the insurance, we're covered for it. And we, Dash is gonna become coil manufacturers. Um, which opens up, if we wanted to, we could do brakes, lower control arms. We could do all the suspension stuff now if we, if we so chose. But we're going to dip our toe in the water with coils. And um, yeah, you have a standard height, uh, one inch, two inch lifted uh, rear coil, but specifically designed for towing. For like weights of 150 kilos or more that you're going to be putting on the tow ball. That's what we've done it for. All right. Uh... That's today, it's Tuesday, that's today over. We'll finish the blower install tomorrow, and then it's dyno day. Then it gets exciting. As promised, you know the engine's out of there, and I'm teasing this out a bit, in a few ways. One, because that's it there. See that big V8 in there? It's in. Not right up or running or anything, but it's in. 
and I'm apologizing now for the clip bake thumbnail. It's just that I was vlogging this week and there was two things to talk about, the supercharger and the V8 Navara. So I'll walk you over there and we'll have a look at the engines sitting in the car. Look at that, she's in. She's tight, but she's in. Go and have a bit of a close look here. Look at that, it's, it's gonna work. We've had the bonnet on, it closes. You know, it's steering rack is, it clears the steering down there. So it's actually no different than a Y62 patrol, to be honest. Engine mounts, like it's just sort of sitting in here, but this is the thing, the engine mounts line up. Um, we've got to bring the engine ever so slightly forward. The only thing is the engine mounts on the Navara are flat, whereas um, a patrol, it's on an angle. So we're looking at possibly getting some engine mounts from um, an R51 and seeing if that's gonna work. So trans isn't in yet, but let me show you underneath the car on the other side. It was like it was meant to be. Have a look at this, ah, getting on the floor. Look at the sump, how it goes past that cross member. Like someone at Nissan wanted this to happen. So we're gonna put the trans in. We're gonna use the Nissan trans, oh, sorry, the patrol trans and the um, Navara transfer case. This is looking promising. I was worried that it was gonna sit really low with the V8 in it, but like, the four inch lift still looks four inch. Got to put the rest of the car back together. But this is a bit of one of those hurry up and wait gains. So now I've got to wait for the engine mounts to come from the US. Um, and then there's the cooling lines and the plumbing and let alone getting the thing to start with getting the computer side of it working. So there's still a lot to go. I reckon, Andrew's telling me January. I reckon it's got to be later than that. But we're on the right track. We're, we're moving forward. Next, um, actually next we're gonna see is, um, we'll be at the dyno, because I think uh, my Y62 Series 5 is finished uh, with the blower on there. So we're gonna go and uh, wind that puppy up. I'm gonna <laughs> pump the tires up as high as they go. New fluids, it's getting service, new air filter. We're doing everything to get the best out of that dyno result. So I'm not sure if I'm showing you what you can achieve with a supercharger on a Y62 or whether I'm just showing how, how to trick dyno reports. Anyway, here we go. So I just got the call. Must admit, I've been looking at the watch like every 10 minutes, just wondering when the tuner's gonna call me to tell me if the car's ready to pick up and what number is gonna be on the dyno sheet. But I got the call. It's time to go and pick up the car and I am like, I don't know, like a fat kid walking into a bakery at the moment. I'm about as excited as you can be. All right, let's go. Oh, it's a bit windy. There it is. There it is. Dino sheet. Let's go and have a look. No, don't. Before you look. Before you look. All right. What do you, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Uh, 286. <laughs> Pessimist. <laughs> Pessimist. It's going to be like 30 two or something like that i've been waiting like i woke up at five o'clock this morning and i've just been uh, like it's like christmas morning <laughs> like, like i'm excited all day couldn't sleep i'm just thinking about the noise that it makes and it's so silly because i know what these cars drive like so i've driven customers cars i know what they sound like but for some reason i'm still so excited there it is all right go on Holy moly, man. What'd it do? I reckon they jinxed it. 301. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. No way. Look at that. Holy moly, man. So if you slip Martin an extra 50 bucks, he'll put whatever number you want on there. I reckon it's because he took this thing off. Hey, don't show that's the bad side. <laughs> don't show that. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm going to get the keys and we're going for a spin. Here we go. First drive, just pulled out of Powertech tuners and this is going to be basically my first time putting foot in throttle, going straight into a 90k zone. Now it's supercharged for a bit of mechanical sympathy. I'm going to drive in manual mode. And here we go. 
see what happens. off camera and um, I'll get back to you. Oh, this is why you have a sunroof. Drop the window on the passenger side an inch just next to the snorkel head and open that sunroof. You hear it? That is awesome. That's addictive. Get out that wind and the induction suck. I've traveled 35k sign. Let's jump back in here. Oh, I'm so happy. That's where I'm going to get the wheel spinning. Round about. Now, don't ask me about fuel economy or towing, maybe towing, it might be better for towing, you know. So, actually in some ways sounds quieter. Weird. Maybe it's just like there's so many different noises coming out of this now. I'm do a drive pipe, pass the go. seen that before out of this car surely surely superchargers don't save fuel surely that could not be It'll have to be some long-term reviewing for that one a bit later I must say I guess like in, in summary of all of this you prepare the car right uh, with yeah service air filter um, having the headers a good a cat back system, snorkel, all of those things are going to be what's going to get you that number. And a little bit of fudging on, you know, near ball tyres. No weight and back. I've left all the fuel out of the car. And uh, I don't know. I think Martin just kept squeezing it until I hit the number I wanted. But anyway, this one I look for this very short term review of the, the Harrop Supercharger on a Y62. This one's out. And I'll see you a very happy face next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.